Today on the Dr. Oz Show. Breaking health news. Could your sunscreen cause cancer? The startling discovery. There are things that interfere with the function of the hormones in our body. Dr. Oz sounds the alarm. Let's stop and let's choose the right chemicals that go on our skin. His new guidelines to keep your family safe. Sunblock is designed to protect you. Could your sunscreen be dangerous? Today, it's a controversial show. There's a growing concern that the very thing you use to protect your skin may cause rashes, hormonal problems, and some even suggest cancer. Now, you use it to cover the largest organ in your body, but is it safe? Dr. Arthur Perry believes some sunscreens can do more harm than good. So, Dr. Perry, let's start with cancer. Why do you believe there might be a problem with some of these sunscreens and the incidence of cancer in America? Well, through my research, Dr. Oz, I learned that chemical sunscreens are actually called endocrine disruptors. Many of them are. In fact, there are things that interfere with the function of the hormones in our body. Now, if we interfere with the function of the hormones in our body, then we can potentially cause cancer. And so if you link the, uh, the studies, there's a real potential for chemical sunscreens to actually cause cancers, particularly breast cancer. And besides cancers, what other concerns do you have with these chemicals? Well, when chemicals called endocrine disruptors get in our body, they can cause real harm, particularly in pregnant women where the developing fetus gets exposed to those endocrine disruptors. And that can result in low birth weight of the developing fetus. In young children that are exposed to endocrine disruptors, let's say in breast milk, then their development can also be altered. In fact, we can have early puberty in girls. We can have small testicle size and low sperm counts in boys when they're exposed to endocrine disruptors. So that's not particularly good. And these chemicals are absorbed in huge quantities in our body. We're putting ounces, ounces of sunscreen in our body, and it goes all through our body and can interfere with every organ. So let me show everybody what Dr. Perry is worried about. And again, this is the big argument. And sunscreens, which we use for many good reasons, when they're applied, they're applied to the top layer of the skin here. So let me just pretend that I'm doing that. This, by the way, is your entire body. And beneath the skin, there's other tissues uh, that are important, the dermis, for example, and there's some fat there in some people. Then you have blood vessels. See this red tube? The blood vessels are even below that. So the thought is that if you can have a system in your body, like the skin, that protects the skin, and it also protects the tissue beneath it and the organs, these vital valuables you've got deep inside your body, your liver, your kidneys, all the other organs, including the breast tissue, for example, that Dr. Perry mentioned. You apply these sunscreens on top of the skin, and if they tend to penetrate through the skin, which most do, they'll begin to seep into the tissue level, then down through the blood vessels where they're absorbed, and they begin to seep onto your valuables. All those organs, those important things deep inside of you, then are exposed to these chemicals, many of which have been changed by the exposure to the sun itself. And after converting these sunscreen chemicals to toxic materials that are endocrine disruptors, alter these valuables deep inside your body. And when your organs are damaged, that course can contribute to many problems, including the cancer we spoke of earlier. The American Academy of Dermatology and almost every dermatologic uh, society, the dermatologists themselves, all promote the use of sunscreen. Dr. Perry, are you saying that they're wrong? Are you saying that they're missing something? Should people stop wearing sunscreen? No, people should still wear sunscreen. I'm just saying let's stop and let's choose the right chemicals that go on our skin and the right chemicals that get absorbed in our body. Let's take benzophenone. That's one of the most common sunscreen ingredients. It's actually a carcinogen in animals. It's known to cause cancer in animals. Is it proven to cause cancer in humans? Absolutely not. But you know, there's a lot of evidence that these endocrine disruptors can cause cancers. Not proven, but you know as well as I know, Dr. Oz, that where there's smoke, there's fire. You're a plastic surgeon. I mean, there are many other areas you could be specializing in and focusing your passion on. Why this area? Why are you so focused on it? Well, I've been uh, taking care of patients for over 25 years. Skin care is a large part of my practice. I'm very sensitive to carcinogens. There's a lot of cancer in my family. I have a lot of uh, very close family members with these problems. And so I really want to know that the substances that we eat and that we put in our skin are uniformly safe and not questionable. There are safe alternatives to chemical sunscreens. So last night I reached out to the Endocrine Society and I spoke to Dr. Thomas Oler, the representative. And he actually, Dr. Perry, shares your concerns. And I'll quote him just uh, in, in short. I'll put the full statement on our website. Dr. Perry makes an important point. Some sunscreens are known to interfere with hormonal action, and they could plausibly increase the risk of various cancers. I also asked Dr. Elizabeth Tanzi to join us. She's a member of my advisory board. 
and she's speaking on behalf of the American Academy of Dermatology, and you do not agree. So you believe Dr. Perry is wrong, why? Well, Dr. Oz, I think that this is akin to yelling fire in a crowded movie theater, because there really are no studies done in people to show that there's an increased risk to, to humans. In fact, the data is speculative because the studies that have been done have been done in uh, test tubes and, and lab animals. And as we know as scientists, just because something happens in a lab rat doesn't mean that it's going to cause harm to humans. So sunscreen, we know that one in five people in their lifetime is going to develop skin cancer. And sunscreen is a very important tool in the fight against skin cancer. We need to make sure that we're not um, giving people any reason not to use their sunscreen. So what do you think happens to those chemicals that get absorbed through the skin like I showed earlier? Well, I think when sunscreen goes on the skin, it protects against skin cancer, and that's been proven. Multiple large studies done in people in both the United States and in Europe have shown the safety of sunscreen. And there's just no evidence to show that any small amount that gets absorbed in any concentration causes harm in people. So just again, to demonstrate what Dr. Tansy is saying, she's arguing, yes, you put the sunscreen on top of the skin. Yes, it gets absorbed through. Yes, it drips down onto the blood vessels and even touches the valuable things inside your body, those key organs I mentioned earlier. But it doesn't cause damage because you don't have any evidence that these chemicals really are toxic once they get inside their body, even though there are significant amounts that get absorbed. So you don't believe that there's a cancer risk here. So let me ask you just a provocative question. If you see a patient in your office that has a concern about breast cancer, maybe she has a family history, maybe she's had breast cancer herself, and she you know, wants to protect her skin, do you tell her to take sunscreen? I tell her to do for herself what I do for myself, and that is to use sunscreen and to have regular breast exams. I think I don't want my patients to put themselves at higher risk for skin cancer because of the unnecessary fear of their sunscreen. Sunscreen is one of the most effective, uh, least expensive ways to prevent against skin cancer, and I advocate using it. Dr. Perry, same patient walks into your office. What would you tell her? I tell my patients to be very careful about what they put on their body. There are very, very good alternatives. We don't need to be putting endocrine disruptors into our body, particularly women, particularly pregnant and lactating women. So it turns out that there is one type of sunscreen that both of these world experts agree on. Find out what to use to keep you and your family protected. That is next. Coming up, does your sunscreen look like this? What can you do about it? How to make the best choice. They're even good for people with sensitive skin. Plus, well, what I'm going to tell my family after today's show, and I urge you all to do the same. Exactly who wore sunscreen because you could see the white cream on their body. But then, in response to vanity, the cosmetic industry changed the way sunblock is produced. And some say this change is harmful to our health. But both Dr. Arthur Perry and Dr. Elizabeth Tansy agree that if you think white, you'll get it right. Let me show you what they mean by, by thinking white. I've got a couple examples. If you don't mind, uh, Dr. Tansy put on the chemical sunscreen, you don't seem to mind that, and the physical sunscreen by Dr. Perry. And I want you to if you can, to show the audience what happens when you apply. So Dr. Tansy puts the chemical sunscreen on, and it goes on and disappears almost immediately because the chemical sunscreen is absorbed into the skin and becomes active there. Dr. Perry, on the other hand, looks like Casper the Ghost uh, with his white hand. Uh, and that's because the, the physical sunscreen doesn't go into the skin, isn't absorbed. And for that reason, it can't get to the bloodstream, but also it leaves a sometimes cosmetically undesirable result. Dr. Perry, the two kinds of sunscreen I just mentioned, please differentiate them for us. What makes them so special? The chemical sunscreens are just what I said. They're chemicals, and in order for them to work, they need to get into the skin. We need to put them on 20 minutes before we go out in the sun. And when they're in the skin, they actually get degraded, destroyed by the ultraviolet light of the sun. The physical sunscreens sit on the surface of the skin and they reflect the sun. They do what we expect sunscreen to do. They just block ultraviolet light. That, that, that's the white that we're talking about. Those are all the physical ones. That, that you, that people aren't going to see labels on their sunscreens, right. chemical versus physical. So what ingredients do they look for to tell that it's a physical sunscreen of the type that we're speaking of? The ingredients to look for for a physical sunscreen are either zinc, titanium, or both. Zinc and titanium. Mm -hmm. So it's basically crushed rocks. Exactly. Okay, so that, no, that's what you're putting on your skin. And what makes them so effective? They're effective because they are lying on the surface of the skin and they reflect both ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B rays. Mm -hmm. And they're even good for people with sensitive skin. Actually, that's the point I hadn't thought of. Mm -hmm. Sensitivities, I, I gather, which a lot of folks do have with sunscreens, maybe less with the physical blockers because they're not absorbed. Dr. Perry, 
biggest complaint folks have about the physical sunscreen is the ones with zinc and titanium in them. Those are the words you're going to look for, zinc and titanium, right, the rocks. Uh, is this white residue that you have on your hand right now. So what can you do about it? Well, that doesn't look too good, but the newer sunscreens that contain what's called micronized zinc oxide are invisible. So you do put them on your skin. They do block ultraviolet light. They do not get absorbed, and yet they're invisible. They're a little more expensive than this stuff that I have on my hand here. And how often do you have to reapply the sunscreens? Well, this is a point of difference between Dr. Tanzi and myself because the physical sunscreens really don't need to be reapplied unless they're wiped off. Uh, we have several hours, certainly, with those, as opposed to the chemical sunscreens, which the FDA tells us we need to reapply every one to two hours. In fact, one of those sunscreens gets completely destroyed in about an hour, 90% of it. And just for full disclosure, Dr. Perry sells a, a sunscreen with zinc. It's one of the reasons you know a lot about the area. So let me show you all what makes sunscreens different from each other. And again, I, I started off the show talking a little bit about the chemical sunscreen that I applied right here. Again, this is the, the top layer of the skin, the deeper tissues, then all those valuables you've got inside your body, the organs. The chemical sunscreen gets absorbed right through there. The physical sunscreens, those minerals that we spoke of earlier, they're crushed into a paste like this. When you apply it on top of the skin, they can't get absorbed. You can't absorb rocks. Instead, it just scatters the UV rays, as Dr. Tansy mentioned earlier. Nothing gets to the dermis, nothing gets deeper, so they really can't be at risk when these are applied, as opposed to the chemical sunscreens that theoretically might have some concerns. So let me share with you what I'm going to tell my family after today's show, and I urge you all to do the same. I think we should use physical sunscreen, the white stuff. You're going to look for the active ingredients, zinc and titanium. You can get the rocks crushed really finely to make it a, you know, a little more expensive but less visible on your skin, but that's going to cost you a bit more. And the prices will vary between about 11 bucks and 95 bucks. So the less it's crushed, the more visible it will be, and the cheaper it will be at the same time. And I want you to go on the DrOz.com for a list of sunscreens approved by the Environmental Working Group that will help you with the decision process.